Right. Okay. So I just need to, I need to re-familiarize myself with what's going on here, and then I need to read uh, this guy's book that details all his interviews with everybody and put together exactly where everybody was and when. Um, and who is everybody? <laughs> Damn it, I should have put these names in <laughs> while I knew who at least a couple people were, because some of these people are from the previous, um, the previous um, chapter or the previous um, puzzle. And it's been like two or three weeks since I played, so I don't remember who's who. Well, this is the prince. His name is not Patu. That was, well, that was the name of the clan, so maybe that's his last name. I think his name was Ergen. Great, I don't remember who anybody else is. Well, this guy's got his name. Arthur Faulkner. So-and-so is a victim. Something is a murder weapon. The blank is where he was murdered. Body was found by. This is the butler. This is the gardener. Doctor. Wasn't he the doctor? Let me go back. <laughs> Look at these. I think these two, their names. I think the gardener's last name was Spade. All right, what was everyone saying? Oh, okay, yeah, that is his name. Leopold is this guy, I wanna say. Well, let's, let's look at the book. Maybe everybody's names are in there. Well, okay, some of their names are in there. So Billiam is the gardener. What was that? Podrick? Podrick is the butler? So everybody's first names are in this book. So that must be his first name. Gideon. So he must be the young guy. There we go. That's all the things. How do I know who the body is? Like, who are you? Who had that information? Augustus. Is this Augustus? Okay, let's let's read everybody's testimonies more closely and try to comprehend them. Leopold had a glass of sherry with James in the library and became drowsy. This is James, right? But he didn't have red eyes. As he was falling asleep, he saw the Lemurian observing him through the glass door. Woke up, found the butler on the floor asleep. Woke up the butler, entered the salon and found the body. Oh. Deduced the Lemurian was the murderer. So Leopold found the body. Hmm. Gideon was playing croquet with the prince. They got bored. They went to the tea house. And they were looking at the chess house. They saw... Alistair lecturing the butler. 
saw Master Turner come out of the chess house, sent the butler away, saw Alistair leave the chess house and return. But they were, these two were in the tea house. Wait, this was uh, James. He drank a glass of sour shandy with Blanchard. That's Leopold. Then he went to the chess house. He found Lord Alistair and the butler, ordered the butler, butler to clean up the library and get rid of the bad sherry. All right, and then he went and played chess with Alistair, apparently. But we know that Alistair left and came back. Lord Alistair says in the morning, or Dr. Alistair, whatever. He practiced chess and educated the butler sometime in the afternoon. Dr. Turner arrived, sent the butler away. He was very close to me. And then this is the butler. His master arrived and instructed him to dispose of the spoiled sherry and then go to assist Mr. Spade in the garden. On entering the library, he found Lord Leopold asleep suddenly. He was overcome with dizziness and fainted. And the gardener was around the chrysanthemum bush. He saw the these two guys leave croquet and go behind the manor. So to the tea house, ostensibly. In the afternoon, he moved to the rose bush. And from there, he saw Lord Augustus leave the fountain around noon. Mr. Hill raised the alarm, so that's the butler. <laughs> Where did I even find these names? I have to look at everybody's letters again. So... He was pruning the roses. We have to look outside. He was pruning the chrysanthemum bushes when he saw them go behind the manor to have tea. And then he moved here and he saw what's his name move from the, the murdered guy. Moderate leader, huh? Well, he's, that's probably not the young guy. Well, he was probably murdered in the salon. But what actually happened? <laughs> what, what is the actual um, <laughs> chain of events here? General, is that Leopold? Is he a general? Alistair's a doctor. The loyalist is James, I want to say. Why does he have an eye patch? Oh, okay, because that's Leopold. Right, yeah, yeah. Well, I thought that James was a politician. Mike, I'm just forgetting. He he must be the general. Well, the gardener says he was at the flower beds. The butler was passed out in the library. Um, Alistair and James say they were together at the chess house. Leopold is the one that found the body, so he was in the library. Or the, uh, salon. The other two say they were at the tea house. <sighs> well, do we take this guy at his word? He says the club was used as the murder weapon. Or, you know, the... Whatever it was called.
but it cleans. That's oh, right, the boomerang. It's, it's got blood all over it and everything. Okay, so what the fuck actually happened? <laughs> Killed, framed, drugged, stole, provoked, planted, and blank a blank. Stole a, planted a. Well, let's see. Sherry, seal, club, button. <laughs> well, the button, that's right. The button is in his hand. But there's three, there's three of these. Um, meanwhile, in the wherever, somebody did, killed somebody. I'm just, I'm trying to think of what makes sense grammatically, since we have, um, I mean, these are the verbs, the blue ones, but some of them are present tense and some of them are past tense. So where would certain ones make sense? You know, um, yeah, uh, he what a what? <laughs> he stole a button is, I want to say someone stole a button, you know, so that he could plant it. Yeah, that's what happened. He drugged Leopold, stole a button off of him so that he could put it in his hand, in Augustus's hand. Uh, Alistair did that, right? Not James. I forget who was drinking sherry uh, with um, Leopold. Let me look it up. Oh, okay, so it was James. It was James, but these guys saw... They Okay, so they saw James come out of the house, but then they saw Alistair go into the house and then go back. Okay. All right, I think I know what happened. Get that down there. Um, so this one is James. In the um, library. Stole a button. Planted a limer. Uh, shoot. Planted, stole, this is this a button <laughs> again? Is the part I'm not really sure about. What the hell? They they stole or planted a Lemurian. Well, these two they stole a tile. Like he's carrying around a tile that looks like it's from the um, the salon on the wall. But I don't know if that's what this is referring to. I mean. No, because what is this? Blank somebody. <laughs> Drugged. Uh... Meanwhile in the library. Maybe this part goes down here? No. A Lemurian something or other. What? 
What is this? This is the part I'm confused about. Oh, yeah, no, um, Leopold. Uh, saw the Lemurian observing him through the glass door. So outside. This way, because this door is not glass. Okay, that's the purpose of showing us this door. Jeez, I was wondering. So they were outside, so. But they did, they did notice him. Well, the eye patch gentleman noticed him. So did they steal? I mean, they look... If they were stolen, wouldn't it look like one was missing? You know, like... <laughs> they look all arranged neatly right now. What am I missing? So here's the thing. There's three sets of somebody doing something to somebody else, but I... But I only know that James drugged Leopold and that, I'm pretty sure Alistair, killed Augustus. Who else did something to somebody else? I think that's the part I'm missing. And since these are the past tense ones, somebody either drugged somebody else or they killed them. They, or they stole a person. Or they planted a person, you know? So what, what is this? What is the third thing? Did somebody kill somebody else? <laughs> is there another dead person? Somebody drugged somebody else? They drugged the butler. The more, or at least the butler is also drugged. Could they have drugged the butler? <laughs> I don't understand. Because again, He's got that seal on him. So I feel like they stole it from the shelf because it says that there are supposed to be 12 there, even though they look neatly arranged and not like one is obviously missing. I'm confused on this. Okay, um. Well, these guys don't seem to be telling their full story because, yes, they were playing Kurt K, which is the right space here, but they did see, like, what was happening in the library and they didn't mention that. Let's say... But why drug the butler? That doesn't make any sense. It had to have been Alistair, right? Oh. <laughs> oh, no, he wouldn't have stolen the seal. It's not on him. <laughs> uh, he stole... No, he... No, this has got to be them stealing the seal early in the morning. Uh... No. Maybe it was... I feel pretty confident about this last part. 
It's this middle part. I don't understand. Am I supposed to deduce something from this? It looks like two people were playing chess. Although the board is set up sideways for some reason. They weren't really playing chess, that's probably why. Maybe it really was this guy. <laughs> I mean, these are the guys, this is the guy that said they saw him go back into the building. But why would they kill this guy, you know? Actually, that's a good question. Why would anybody kill him? Honestly, this makes sense to me. <laughs> I don't know what else to do. Why would someone kill him? Um, provoke a conflict. Hmm. You know, we've got two. We've got a full glass of sherry and an empty glass of sherry. And then one full thing of tea and one empty. So maybe Gideon was drunk. No, he's he doesn't have red eyes. Ergen drew his attention to the chess house. Saw the Lemurian by himself. Loss of perception of time. Rapid blinking. Okay. were in the tea house. Brotherhood members Alistair and James plotted to turn the ruling moderate and loyalist parties against each other. Okay. Over the course of a weekend at James's manor, Alistair murdered the moderate leader and James framed the loyalist leader. All right. You have proven that I can trust you. Here's the Brotherhood's artifact that I removed from the traitor, Keen. Let me educate you how it works. I set it to take heat in this cup of water, and I change the symbols, and use the idol to give that heat to something else. But if there is, but there is much more that the idol can do. I see, that's why you do the freezing first. You're taking the heat. Okay, yeah, yeah, got it. Oh my gosh. Also, I'd forgotten about like this scene. Was it this scene? Mm 
No, it was um, somebody paid him to learn about what happened there. Fancy hat. <laughs> um, yeah, probably him. Okay. A new order. Triumph of Order. Ooh. There's Gorin. Poor bugger, I've never seen so much merit removed in the tribunal. Some mistakes are very costly. God. I'll be in front of banknotes. Is that a passport? Secret compartment in his office locker. Denied the existence of the secret compartment. Compartment. Loyal service in low-ranking position. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is insane. That is Walter Keane, maybe. Prince of Dust. Like night, I am dark and full of terror. I do not fear love. Do not make that error. When you know my name, just look for my face. No apparent moons. What the hell is this? This is a lawyer. It is a thing of beauty. To see order prevail. If it were not against the first virtue, I'd feel very happy. Oh, so you guys are in a cult where it is illegal to be happy? Okay, that's cool. I'll wager you feel the new regime uh, rewards your diligence now. So tell me why I saw you spend more than three shillings on new clothes after I asked you to lend me money and you said you had none to spare. I suggest you lend me some now unless you want me to write, you, uh, to write up an official report about a fourth virtue breach. record keeper labeled a protocol as being on Thursday even though it was Wednesday took a double length lunch break oh my god loyal service and low ranking position it's <laughs> amazing the third virtue and this is supposed to remind me of the third virtue okay and remember the second virtue no sleeping at your desk. No dressing up in frivolous clothing. Such a relief that they decided not to push any fashion charges. I hope the process is not painful. This tribunal is a farce. They spread lies. What lies? That my pure love is merely lust. And what do they even know about true art? I felt it in my bones that I should have drunk less. Now we poor souls experience God's wrath. So one by one, these are the guys going through uh, the trial or a tribunal. This guy is too fashionable. This guy's in love or whatever, and this guy drank too much. If that was Walter Keane, yeah, he'd probably feel kind of irritated about that, right? Oh, okay. Music to my ears, Alistair, but do control your emotions. We as arbiters of order must never violate the first virtue. A bunch of Albion Franck banknotes. Dear Dr. Turner, I must regretfully inform you that, during your absence from party business, your senior assistant Daniel has demonstrated extreme untidiness and thus breached one of the virtues. 
What a fucking tattletale. <laughs> Drank a full body of, bottle of brandy at a picnic. Kept the book Legacy of Rose, the Rose Dynasty in his study. Loyal or service to the order party in high ranking position. What are you insinuating, James? I would never breach the fourth virtue. You know damn well that I keep no secrets. I'm writing to inform you that our regiment's colonel was seen with another officer's wife in, pot in a potentially intimate situation. We implore you to send your agents to investigate uh, this potential flouting of the first virtue. Slap to Sergeant in anger. <laughs> Listen to marching music in his manner. <laughs> Mr. Fangor Quinn claimed he had no wife, has a painting depicting a naked person in his house, broke his wife's favorite teapot in anger, was observed spending a night with neighbor's wife. Walter Keen flirted three times with different married women during the party convention, <laughs> wore ridiculous headgear at five public events, claimed he had not betrayed High Arbiter Lazarus during his ritual of ascendance. Wait, Lothar Richards? We've seen him before. Held a dinner party a few years ago where he offered large amounts of wine to his years, uh, to his guests. Got angry during the questioning and shouted at the High Arbiter. Revealed the whereabouts of his hiding. Wait, what? Revealed the whereabouts of his hiding fugitive dissident daughter Mary and her husband Peter. Ugh, barf. This is a drinker. Left his work at Tannery early. Drank excessive amounts of gin. Drank excessive amounts of rum. Approached a married woman with an indecent offer. He denied that he did these acts. This is the opulent guy. Has not held down a job since the new regime. Claims he works in his castle, helping his servants clean it. Possesses 15 books. Expressed willingness to donate his castle to the party. Duke Gideon Bell. Wears an outrageous hairstyle. Broke down in tears 10 times during the questioning. Has refused to start working. Evaluated as five instances of job skipping. Rejected the High Arbiter's request that he share information of a secret entrance to the castle of his cousin, the Sovereign. Ooh, yeah, I don't- I was just thinking, I don't know how long it's been. During our tribunal... The four virtues to avoid losing, losing merit. What? This doesn't make any sense. Remember the second virtue. Store confiscated objects and evidence according to the virtue breached. Silence. You will perform your function as much as is required. It is paramount to ensure order in our new society. This guy is fucking insane. Mm. 
In all truth, Lord High Arbiter, I would prefer storing no more than this. Since year 1792, when it gained a majority in Parliament and liberated our government from multi-party chaos, the Order Party has worked hard to improve society. Despite the vast popular support for the party, His Majesty refuses to acknowledge the authority of the party's tribunal. High Arbiter Lazarus Hirsch has announced that in two months, the party and its supporters will participate in a peaceful march to the king's current residence to demonstrate their virtue of moderation. Yeah, I'm sure. I am honored to help the party upkeep the four virtues. I only hope sitting here all day does not count as sloth. Eh, hey, there are worse jobs than this one. And thank God tobacco is not considered an indulgence. A bit boring though, too bad. Literature is forbidden. So, substances. An invoice for a buttered delivery. What? Violin. Portrait of Gideon Bell, painted by Jasmine Nightwings in 1794. It's very silly. So basically, art and music. Stories and autumn tales. And then literature. I don't understand this one. An invoice for butter? An invoice for food, basically. You know? Is butter not permitted or what? What, what are these? Why even have this square if you can't... Oh, I see. Okay, um, I need to look at the timeline. Uh, the word merit, I feel like, should go here. Well, that was maybe not Walter. Um... Who does that look like? I have to go back and look, but um, maybe I can figure it out. Yeah, merit, like. Oh my God, okay, um. Loyalty. It's got to be one of the virtues, right? Let's see. Diligence and, um... Diligence. Moderation. Those sound like good things. Truth? What is... What would be the fourth, um, virtue then? So no secrecy, but loyalty is rewarded. Ugh, gonna have to do math. How am I missing so much stuff? So the first virtue does not allow drugs and drinking. So let's call that indulgence. 
Uh, you'd think moderation maybe would be the opposite of that. The second one... The second virtue prohibits delivery of butter. <laughs> uh, I guess three pounds of butter. I don't know. What What is wrong with this? I don't get it. Is that too much? Is that not moderation either? Damn it, I don't know. The third one doesn't like art and music. Vulgar art. But what's with the violin? Fourth virtue. All literature. Ugh. Huh. Diligence, probably, then. Let's just guess that. Um, those posters downstairs. Um, those posters downstairs had that ridiculous outfit on the third one. Uh, so what would that be? The third virtue is... I don't see anything. I must not have that yet. The fourth virtue uh, means no literature. Souls. <laughs> Truth? Maybe literature, since it's fiction, they don't consider that to be truth, so it's not virtuous. Well, I'm still missing stuff, so I better, I better find that. tracks. Oh. Weekly order party of People's Tribunal 42. It is March 14th, 1795. Six culprits. Each culprit's charges are evaluated and merit changes are calculated. know the time? Oh, that only gave me one word! <laughs> it took them three hours to do that? idea what was used on him. Of course, I don't want to fill this in, really. <laughs> I want to do all this first. I just, I don't really understand these. Like, this, this is what comes first. Understanding what the hell these ridiculous virtues are. Emotion. <laughs> and music. So I can put music in. Emotions. Oh, maybe mistakes? I think this is my last word that I'm missing. The third virtue is bones. <laughs> uh, souls? 
The third virtue is plainness. Fashion. No, that's my last word. Frick. What would be a virtue? Maybe, maybe the virtue is beauty, because, yeah, it's the vulgar part that they don't like. Okay, I understand the virtues. I mean, I understand what they are. So let's see what people are being punished for. Or, you know, what their scores are. Secrecy and lies. But he is loyal to the party. And a low-ranking position. Is that diligence? I think that would be diligence. So... <sighs> two demerits of truth is still a lot less than one merit of virtue. So... Or, of, of diligence. They're all virtues. I mean, this could be... 16, and each one of these could be four. Uh, lack of diligence. And then diligence. <laughs> Loyal service. Oh, plus 10 merit. Oh, okay. So this is almost like just different, probably. That's my guess. So um, if this is plus 10, then each of these is minus one. Easy enough. Um, and for you, uh, plus 10, um, then each of these would be minus three. Easy math, right? <laughs> this is a plus 20 merit, so uh, minus 8, so each of these is minus 4. These are... Oh no, they're different, because this is indulgence and this is vulgarity. Emotions and vulgarity, so same thing. Oh. But different. Soft as Sergeant of Anger. Listen to marching music in his manner. Drank a full bottle. Oh, that's literature, I guess. That'd be seven. <sighs> Lies, vulgarity, emotions, um, lust. So, uh, seven, seven, two? And, uh, lies, one. Okay, so, uh, 17. 
If I do math incorrectly, I'm gonna be so mad. Is this Fangor? Yeah. Okay. Flirted. Uh oh. Uh. Is that this one? Probably. Well, three times. Oh my gosh, is that seven each time? Wore ridiculous headgear at five public events. Claimed he had not betrayed Lazarus. So let's say that that each time counts. So this would be um, three times seven, which is 21. And this would be um, this. Wait, it said five times, so 10. So 31, and then he lied, so 32. Okay, yeah. All right. Lothar Richards held a dinner party a few years ago. Uh, wine, so indulgence. Got angry, emotions. Plus 15. Um, so he would be plus one, I believe. broke these up because it would just be too annoying to do all these in one panel. This is the drinker. Left his work at the tannery early. So that's three. Uh, plus seven, that's ten. Plus seven more, seventeen. Um, approached a married woman with an indecent offer. That's, that's still probably here, right? Blessed. Geez, so he's, um, 24, and then four times he lied, so 28? That seems awfully high. Uh, plus 200. <laughs> Has not held down a job. 60 instances of non-work. So, um, 60 times 3 is uh, 180. 15 bucks. So that counts as 15. And then 16 because he lied. So, 196, so, um, you'd end up positive four, I think. Where's an outrageous hairstyle? So, two. That would be emotions times 10? Oh my god. That would be like... That would be 70. That would be more than Walter. It's 73. Refused. So 5 times 2. That's 10. 83. Rejected. I think that would just be the one. What did I say? 70, 80, 3, 84? Okay. Broke down in tears 10 times during the questioning. That's emotional. So 7 times 10. Five instances of job skipping. Oh, uh, that's what I did wrong. Um, 15, not 10. So 85, 88, 89. Fuck. What am I mathing wrong? 
An outrageous hairstyle. Oh, that would be plus two. 87 plus one. Wow, so, um. <laughs> it's not him at all, is it? Just because he cried. <laughs> uh, during questioning, basically. What the hell was used on him? The idol, I guess. Would have had to have been. The idol. So how many years have passed? This is... 1795. What year was this? 92. The hell is wrong? It has to be the idol. So, because, um, Thing, the symbols that were on the back of the idol that what's his name was holding looked like, from what I remember, something to do with life, you know? Life, uh, soul sucking, basically. He lost 88 bones. Did his bones just leave his body? Am I supposed to know? Well, this should be right, because, um... You know... Oh, years! Oh, okay. <laughs> the order party has seized... I see. The order party has seized power and now enforce. What does that say about Walter Keane? That he looked like a, a guy that had 88 lives just taken, or gears just taken from him. The order party has seized power and now enforces the four maxims of virtue. Big oof. The young Duke Gideon Bell was judged during the tribunal to have lost 88 merits. The high arbiter of the party, Lazarus Hurst, used the idol to decrease Gideon's youth by 88 years, thus making him 108, which resulted in his death. Big yikes. I want to see what's going on here real quick. The slight delay in the peaceful march to the king's castle. Oh, yeah, okay, a lot's happening. Surprise, surprise. This is the um, the uh, disgruntled peasant. What what's the I forget the name of the bit in Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Oh, that's so good though. Oh, I didn't vote for you. Oh, oh. <laughs> these same people are here. Nonsense! I'm not an idiot, but real men like us could beat those order party minis, even without any weapons. But I heard rumors you lost a cannon while gambling. Do you think they will try to kidnap the king? Me and my employer are getting out of this blasted country. Is that that lady, that servant lady? I have instructed him to arrive at around half eleven. Most likely he will be in order party uniform. If he comes alone, Without any backup outside, approach him. If he gives you something that belonged to the one who escaped your tonic, you may proffer him the instruction slip I gave you. Conceal your face, he may recognize you. Yes, I believe that is her. Baker, Walter not.
You will find me in the first place where we two first met. Ooh. I recognize that voice. It is you. Isn't it poetic that you have fallen for the same trap you did all those years ago? Straw men are your bane. Newly invented transportation device. Oh my god. Scarecrow with a hole through its head. A bullet lodged in the wall. He's wearing that hat. White pigeon. I admit. I may have treated you unjustly after our long cooperation. I will come alone, in peace, so we can discuss your compensation. A book! There's a note in a cage? What? <laughs> Lazarus, you took 32 things from me. I demand you return them. If you refuse, I will make the story of your true origins known to the other party leaders. At half past 11 on May, on May 15, meet me at the place the idol was stolen from our brotherhood. And poor Willard Wright met his death. Come alone and bring proof, something personal of yours, to give to the veiled woman. Tie your reply to the pigeon and release it from the cage. It will find me. This is gonna this is gonna be interesting. What's what it says? Oh, another guy. A dead guy. A man in a helmet with numerous cuts not breathing. Okay. Alright. <laughs> you have to put a lot of pieces together next time. My goodness. <laughs> 